the, especially the courts around kings and around regions, they were very important places of cultural transfusion in the area because there were individuals and people who traveled from one court to another and they shared a similar lifestyle and they were in a way this part of larger group of aristocracy in, in Europe. And uh, uh, for example, British historian Eric Hobsbawm has uh, located the birth of uh, ladies fashion as a modern phenomenon to somewhere in the beginning of 19th century already which is a bit surprising at least to me because uh, that uh, was a time in history uh, where there emer emerged this group of ladies that had the time and had the means of, of investing the, investing their efforts of of trying to look as nice as possible <laughs> These uh, trading routes were hugely important in, in this respect as well. That then these new products that were innovated in some place of the region, uh, they traveled quite quickly in relative terms because we have to think about the, that the, the ways of travel were much more slower uh, that time. But um, nowadays we talk a lot about globalization and it's easy to forget that uh, globalization didn't arrive from nothing in the 1990s. This uh, international cooperation had been taking place for centuries, even thousands, thousands of years before. Baltic Sea region was an important network of universities, for example, and uh, all kinds of cultural transfers took place and people traveled from one place to another, merchants were doing trade and, uh, and these innovations spread throughout the era and people were thinking in, in terms of the region. Uh, it has just uh, it has become this historical illusion to think in terms of nation states because they have, be, they have been so dominant for the past 200 years and when we are thinking about or talking about national histories then we tend to tend to underline or stress the differences and these unique achievements by separate distinct nations when at the same time an alternative approach is possible, an approach that uh, stresses, and stresses and underlines the importance of international cooperation and all kinds of activities that took place across the borders. My dream Europe, uh, we're on the way there. Uh, it is a free and open place, uh, just an area where everybody is free to move and also all goods would be free to move. And, but still, there would be enough attention for the individual. It's like people can feel secure in this place. Well, I think realistically what I can imagine, of course, we will be more technologically advanced. That's for sure. And then uh, I think we will be also more multicultural. There's a lot of um, talking about um, having more investments into research and development so we can actually compete with states like India or, or China or the US as a matter of fact. So I think if, if that would be done and um, you know all the layers of society would be equally integrated into that process, we, we, we can do that. I think uh, working uh, welfare network is essential for any kind of innovation to come up. Uh, when we talk about innovation, it is sometimes that somebody starts an uh, enterprise with good idea and it doesn't work out, maybe even in most cases it does not. But um, with innovation, just should keep trying and if there is some support, it, it is much easier. <laughs>